all you big beautiful brains out there. Today we're talking about the Stroop Effect. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about the Stroop Effect and why it messes with our brains. First designed and administered by John Ridley Stroop in 1935, the paradigm we now call the Stroop Effect has become one of the best known and most studied effects in cognitive psychology. You probably came to this video because you've seen a picture online or in a textbook that looks a lot like this. In the Stroop test, you look at words that say one color but are printed in a different color. When you're asked to say the color of the ink instead of the printed word as fast as you can for a test, your brain gets a little confused. But why? For a lot of people, reading is a task that comes fairly automatically. Readers' brains are trained to look at a grouping of letters and see a word. The Stroop effect shows what happens when readers have to slow down, go back, and instead of automatically reading the word, identify the color of the print. That delay in time between the automatic reading and having to actively process the print color leaves us feeling jumbled up. Readers rely on that automatic processing a ton throughout the day, so having to put that automatic process on hold can be pretty difficult. Psychologists call this interference when trying to do one thing gets in the way of trying to do another. In the Stroop task, researchers actually measure the amount of interference by noting how long it takes a participant to respond. One of the most interesting things scientists have found about the Stroop effect is that the effect pretty much goes away when you're not having to try to overcome that mismatch between the color word and the printed color. If you give someone a neutral word or even just squares or blocks, the effect kind of vanishes. It's called semantic interference and it would indicate that it's not just the words or colors that are needed to get the Stroop effect. You really have to have both working together or I guess working against each other to observe the effect. One thing that holds pretty consistent throughout most of the literature on the Stroop effect is that the faster or more practiced someone is at reading, the more apparent the effect is. So people who are better at reading perform worse on the Stroop test. It's also worth noting that since the 2000s, there's been some controversy surrounding the brain processes that might be in play in the Stroop effect. I'll link some articles below if you want to do a deeper dive because this is where I find that the Stroop effect starts to get a lot more interesting. For instance, what else could cause this type of interference? Does it even have to be language or reading? When researchers look at kids between the ages of 3 to 6 who have never even been taught to read, they can still get effects really similar to the Stroop effect by pairing pictures of objects, usually associated with one color, in an unexpected color. For instance, say a drawing of a banana that's purple. It creates that same sort of unexpected disconnect and produces a delay in responding. Another example is the emotional Stroop test. In that task, participants have to name the color of an emotionally charged word, like kill or shame. The emotional Stroop task has been researched widely clinically for use in treatment and diagnoses in things like anxiety, PTSD, and even depression. If you want to know more about other types of interference in your life, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! Okay, Stroop Effect, real life test, go. Green, pink, red, orange, purple, gummy bear, blue, pink, orange, green, subscribe, ah, purple, <laughs> orange, sigh, red.